mountain of dragons. Stretching over 1,000 kilometers, hosting the largest collection of sand rock art in the world and being one of 39 UNESCO World Heritage Sites with mixed criterion for culture and nature, welcome to South Africa's largest mountain range, the Drakensberg. tallest mountain range at the end of the sci-fi film 2012, the Drakensberg is also home to the five-tiered Tugela Falls, which is debatedly classed as the tallest or second tallest waterfall in the world. There are endless lists of activities to indulge in, and no two travellers are the same. So to save you some analysis paralysis, we have curated an eclectic itinerary through the Drakensberg and Midlands Meander. We are presenting them in an exciting 10-day road trip, but we'll do our utmost to enable each adventure to be a standalone excursion that you can piece together in your own ultimate Drakensberg and Midlands Meander travel plan. Canon South Africa was kind enough to lend us the EOSR to shoot this trip. We also received sponsored stays at Ant Bear, Hartford and Nguni. But as always, all routes, advice, views and reviews are entirely our own. Are you ready? Let's go! No trip through the Drakensberg would be complete without some hiking, and there's no better way to ease yourself into it than slack packing. From Johannesburg, you're looking at a four to five hour drive to Ant Bear Lodge, while from Durban, it's around three. All that matters is you get there early and you get there happy, so enjoy the drive. Ant Bear Eco Lodge is situated right near the Giant's Castle Game Reserve. It boasts some beautiful views over the nearby mountains and promotes an eco-sustainable lifestyle. The artistry and craftsmanship of all of the woodwork is so unique and fascinating that it stirs up your own creativity. This passion to create the unusual can be seen throughout the whole lodge. Arriving around midday will afford you ample time to get checked in and start exploring. There is a Rapunzel tower, a labyrinth, many friendly animals, a garden, upstairs lounge and reading nook, lots of space to walk around and a few benches scattered around in unique areas. For a little wider exploration of the area, why not go horse riding? Step 1. These are some of the happiest horses we have ever seen and it is a fun way to venture a little further than the lodge itself. When you return, you can indulge in whatever scrumptious three-course meal Chef Brad has whipped up for you and a sundowner on the veranda. The day is done, however, yours isn't. Step 2. Journey through the stars accompanied by African folk tales. After your divine dinner, you can choose to be escorted down the field and into your own hammock. Then you just gaze out at the mesmerizing night sky and let yourself be whisked away on adventures as you are told traditional tales. We were still lost in the stars well after the stories were finished. The only way to end an evening like this is to Step 3. Spend the night in a luxury cave. With your own private balcony, jacuzzi, bath and hammocks, you might even be enticed to romantically enjoy your dinner right there. But what we can guarantee is that it's the most comfortable night in a cave we have ever had. So after a good night's rest, you should be ready for your next adventure. So fill yourself up with some breakfast and meet up with Dion for step four, slack packing. Imagine combining the beauty of hiking through the mountains with the lavish comforts of a three course meal and soft beds. Slack packing is a way to enjoy the great outdoors, get some miles on the legs and not have to carry very much at all. Whether you are a seasoned hiker looking for a luxury getaway or a newbie testing out your hiking disposition, this could be the trip for you. Day one takes you 13 kilometers from Ant Bear to Leopard's Lair. A few hills, varied terrain and an awesome lunch spot are on the agenda. You can expect to be greeted with ice cold drinks, warm company and delicious homemade treats. You can take a relaxing bath, refreshing shower, a nap, but what you'll definitely want to do is meet some of the animals. We adored little Fluffy the Egyptian goose and Lali the eland was just so friendly. Perhaps you're more keen on turkeys or emus or cows or sheep or just walking around and taking it all in. Whatever you do, best ensure you have built an appetite for some hearty farm style cooking. Day 2 boasts a 13 km trail taking you from Leopard's Lair to Zulu Waters. Grasslands, farmlands and ruins make up the day's landscape with the final section entirely in a private game reserve. I don't suppose I'd need to do much persuasion here, but if Magnificent Wildlife doesn't entice you, perhaps this accommodation will. Could we interest you in a chill beverage by the pool overlooking the river while animals stroll past at sunset? No? The final day begins inside the game reserve with quite some scenic vistas. A few animal spottings and river crossings later, you exit the game reserve and complete your 14 kilometers, ending back at Ant Bear Lodge. 
Now I don't know about you, but all of this luxurious hiking has really got me in the mood to relax. So after celebratory refreshment at Anbe, jump in the car and head to Step 5. Injusuti Camp One and a half hours separates you from one of the most idyllic campsites in the Drakensberg. The road to Injusuti will take you through a rural community in the mountains. You will need to be on the lookout for crossing cows, goats, sheep and playing children. Once you have passed the farmlands, you will have to drive through an unmarked farm gate. Drive through it, you are not entering a farmer's private property. A while later, you will see the Injusuti sign pop up. Carry on further and you will come across a directory sign. This will lead you to the campsite, reception, the curio shop and the parking for day hikers. Not only is there the option to camp, but you can also rent a 4 to 8 person self-catering chalet or a ready set up rustic safari tent. However, you would still need to bring your own linen and crockery as that is not provided with the tents. This is a great solution for those looking to camp who don't have their own camping equipment. They also are right on the stream which is really nice. Should the slack packing have been insufficient, there is also the option of doing overnight hikes from here. These are really cool as there are five natural caves you can stay over in. Short of explaining everything, head over to deartravelio.com for all the details, linked below. We opted not to embark on another hike immediately, but rather spend the evening with some wine in hand around the fire. Did we mention we had the entire place practically to ourselves? Oh, and the bathrooms are really clean. They even had a bath which is so cool. Step 6. Explore in Jesuti. There are multiple day hikes of varying length to enjoy, heading to streams, pools, caves, forests and most notably the marble pools or guided battle cave hike that takes you to some of the best preserved sand rock art in southern Africa. We chose to enjoy the stream that runs through the campsite, the gorge pools and the waterfall. The gorge pools are a 2 minute drive from the entrance and a 5 minute walk down. There you can journey along the many paths, swim in the pools or enjoy a scenic picnic near the waterfalls. The waterfall is just before exiting the main gate. Injusuti has a conservation fee of 45 Rand for South Africans and 70 Rand for foreigners. We paid 200 Rand per night for the campsite as of November 2019. After a day's adventure in Injusuti, if you don't plan to spend another night or hike some more, head on over to Moy River. Getting into the Midlands meander, you'll want to spend the night close to Nottingham Road. We stayed just north of Nottingham Road along the actual Moy River in Rosetta. There are a myriad of lovely accommodation options to choose from, so you just have to match your budget to your taste. Airbnb is also a very good tool for finding your desired stay. So if you don't already have an account, follow our link down below and you can score up to 825 Rand off of your first trip. 90 kilometers and an hour and a half will take you from Injusuti to Moy River, where you can spend a relaxing evening, possibly along the river. Now wake up, we have some exploring to do. The list of activities is endless, so again, here's our selection. Start by heading to step 7, Lineage Coffee for a bite to eat and some caffeine to kickstart your day. A 20 km and 20 minute drive will get you there. From there we'd suggest a gin tasting at the Nottingham Road Brewing Company as step 8, the fairway tree where you can buy handmade fairy themed ornaments made from natural and recycled materials as step 9, a little more retail therapy at the Ugly Duckling for some unique finds at step 10 and end it all off with step 11 at the wine cellar. Find yourself a special bottle from the expansive collection and enjoy a platter from the deli in their comfortable charity bookstore for an afternoon read. That should suffice as a successful day out, but you can always go for a walk before dinner if you're looking for some more. Continuing along the Midlands meander, we begin the next day by heading to Hartford House. A short 26 minutes from Nottingham Road is the only world-class hotel on a world-class stud farm in the world. Driving in past the lush green pastures, lakes and ornate buildings will entice you to explore a little on foot, as you should. Simply check in and go about discovering the gardens, walkways, fountains, lake and even the main house before heading to the Tainhays for... Step 12. Make your way across the koi pond on the stepping stones, past the herb garden and fireplaces, to your relaxing lunchtime haven. We'd recommend an icy fresh gin and whatever's on the daily menu. Or if that doesn't tantalize you, the vegetarian lasagna is to die for. However, the menu is seasonal, so if it's not there, something better will be. While you are here, just book for your high tea picnic for tomorrow, but we'll get there. Step 13. The Stud Farm Tour. You can arrange to be picked up in a van and shown around the property, learning about the history, the changes, the owners and of course, getting to meet some amazing horses. You can also go for a horse ride if you'd like, but since we already did that in step 1, we decided to spend a little more time taking in nature. 
By 6.30, you should be ready for step 14. First, we meet at the main house for some drinks and conversation before moving over to the dining room for your sixth course meal. Chef Matthew Armbruster will personally welcome you and go through the evening's menu with you. And if you can catch him outside of dinner time, he has some fascinating insight into his menu choices, his preparation styles and anything food or hard food related. Should you be celebrating a special occasion or would just like to have the fine dining experience in a secluded space, you can ask to be seated in the private dining room. After your meal, you are welcomed into your suite with the fire already burning when it's chilly outside or the lights on and covers ready for you to get snuggled into. A vitally important choice, however, is where you choose to stay. There are a variety of unique suites, each with their own style and personality. They are briefly described in our online article and we even have a few video room tours on our Facebook page linked below. But if you're leaving tomorrow and need to know where to stay, we'd opt for the Siabonga Lakeside Suite or either of the garden suites. For step 15, ask to have the bicycles ready for you in the morning. After a delightful breakfast over the garden, head on back to your room where you'll find the bicycles awaiting you. There was something so magical about cycling around the property, past the animals, the pastures, the trees, the lakes. It was so calming and so peaceful and really, really fun. If you've worked up a sweat, we encourage you to take a dip in the pool before your own expertly arranged step 16. That's right, remember the high tea picnic? Well, it's time for that. Set up wherever you choose, which is often by the pool. You will find a blanket, cushions, an ice bucket and of course platters of mouth-watering finger food. You could literally spend hours nibbling, relaxing, napping and chatting. We had such a great time with this and spent most of the day here. Which you should do too, considering step 17 is your dinner. Drinks at 6.30, dinner at 7, but tonight we are indulging in the four course meal. Sure, you could go for another six course, but why not experience some variety? The following morning brings words you are probably dreading to hear. It's time to leave. But fear not, we have some more exciting adventures lined up for you. Centered in Hawick, it's advised to make the 51 kilometer journey into town and find an appropriate place to stay. Again, Airbnb is a great tool to find yourself the perfect lodging for a night or two. The journey will take less than an hour, so either check in and drop off your bags or head straight through to step 18. The Nelson Mandela Capture Site Not just in South Africa, but around the entire world, Nelson Mandela is a renowned leader, icon and symbol for positive change. His legacy will continue for generations to come, but this didn't come without massive sacrifices. Visiting the capture site is now an interesting outing with fascinating design and a powerful recount of impactful moments. But you should take a moment to try and imagine the reality of what actually happened. Even though you will never truly understand how that moment felt, to stand on the very ground where our nation's history took a very important turn is reason enough to make the trip. The Apartheid Museum on site was not open when we visited, but has been up and running since the 13th of February 2020. Tickets are 100 Rand per adult. From here, head 5 kilometers and 7 minutes up the road to Piggly Wiggly Country Village. Step 19, grab a light lunch from the Piggly Wiggly coffee shop. And light is important. You'll need to save some space for dessert, but before that, walk around and explore the shopping center a little. Or as step 20, Grab yourself a kit and express yourself artistically at Zululu Art Bar or take it home with you for later. The gallery side of Zululu also showcases some exquisite pieces if you're looking to accessorize, decorate or gift. A little further along comes another opportunity for you to get creative in the form of step 21, candle dipping. There are so many different molds, shapes and sizes to choose from. Please don't judge by choice, we are creative in other ways, okay? <laughs> But anyway, you get to dip it in three colors and then you can sit outside painting it however you like. Oh, you can also buy train tickets here, but unfortunately it only runs on weekends and holidays. So all you ferro econologists out there should plan accordingly. Are you ready for another creative outlet? Well, this one is still all about creation, but the end result is always the same. Happiness. Welcome to step 22, chocolate heaven. You can always just pop in to buy some ready-made chocolates, ingredients or drink powders. Or you can be like us and get a decadent chocolate fondue. You get to choose your own dipping ingredients according to the weight and then you choose between milk chocolate, dark chocolate or white chocolate for the actual fondue. 
And you get to freeze your leftover chocolate in molds to take home with you. Assuming you're feeling fit enough to walk to the car after all of that, we're going to admire other people's creativity this time for step 23. Ardmore Ceramic Art is merely 12 minutes and 7.5 kilometers further down the road. We were told about Ardmore by a friend we made at Piggly Wiggly. She told us that we would not regret paying them a visit. The setting of the gallery is already scenic, on the Artwell farm, at the backdrop of the Drakensberg, even the drive there is fun. There's something so special about Artmore and their artwork. Knowing that each piece is unique, specifically designed, and speaks to the truth of the artist behind it, makes it so much more than just a beautiful piece of art. What's cool is you can even see the artists working on their next piece right there. Step 24, the farmer's daughter, is 20 minutes and 18.8 kilometers away. This homely restaurant is set against a beautiful valley with both indoor and outdoor seating to suit your preference. You can get a light dinner here. Based on the fact that you're probably still a little full from our early indulgences, besides staying open comparably late for the area, they also offer great Sunday lunches if you find yourself in the vicinity on a Sunday afternoon. We woke up early the next day out of sheer excitement for the adventures ahead and suggest you do the same. We start off at Howick Falls for step 25, 9 minutes and 4.5 kilometers from the center of town. Howick Falls is a stunning 95 meter high waterfall that has a great legend attached to it. Local legend says that a giant serpent creature lives at the bottom of the falls and only a Sangoma may approach it, but only to pray and offer worship to the beast. Something else we find fascinating is that they have a record of all of the people who have fallen over the edge, the earliest being recorded in 1851. Unfortunately, we have also heard that it is not so safe anymore, so we advise that you be careful and vigilant, but do encourage people to visit. It is still a stunning waterfall. What's better than visiting a beautiful waterfall? Another one. Step 26 is Karkloof Falls, an easily managed 30 minutes and 16 kilometers away. The drive there is already spectacular through the sappy pine forests on winding dirt roads and it's not too far away from the main town. Had we known how beautiful and secluded the area is, we would definitely have brought a picnic basket or even some friends and a bribe we could have wrangled that together. Perhaps you could at least manage a flask of coffee and some rusks. Do it for us. Please. Also, there are running, hiking and cycling trails in the area and we only wish we could have hiked right to the waterfall itself. But we have heard mixed reviews about whether that is still allowed or not. Seeing as though we were unaware of the picnic ability of Karklua Falls, we were still on the hunt for some breakfast to keep us going. And we are really glad we did. 40 minutes and 23 and a half kilometers away is the Barn Owl Coffee, otherwise known as Step 27. While it wasn't actually that simple, but it was definitely serendipity at its finest. Our road trip was well underway and we had been doing very well with sticking to our plans. Until of course the breakfast spot we were initially heading to was closed. Luckily, not too long before that, we saw a humble sign pointing towards the bar now. One U-turn and a few minutes later, we were at one of my all-time favorite cafes. All of the essentials are present. Friendly star, a delicious menu, amazing coffee, and a picturesque setting. The only thing we would change is moving it closer to home. This is it, the home stretch. Ready for two more days? Yep. Here we go. From Barn Owl, you'll need to spend an hour and 40 minutes conquering 137 kilometers to our final accommodation, Nguni Moon TP Camp. We had some weird weather entering Underberg and it turned from a scorcher into a misty afternoon. But this made arriving so much more dreamy. The teepees emerged through the mist, guarded by a calm dam with trees all around and mountains as the backdrop. From then, we already knew it was gonna be amazing. Step 28 really depends on you and your weather, but for us, it meant enjoying the campsite. We played some games while snuggled up under the blankets, had coffee around the fireplace, we made a warm meal, and we got to build a puzzle before finally climbing into bed with the heater on. The next morning brought a brilliant sunrise and we bounded out of bed for step 29, hiking down to the Umzumkulu River. The hike down is short, but it provides you with the most stunning views. You can smell the fresh air, see the cows grazing on the other side of the river, and you might even come across the two resident cows belonging to Jenny and Alex and Guni Moon's owners. The river is a great place to enjoy some breakfast and even have a swim if the weather permits. Step 30 is a 16 minute and 10 and a half kilometer drive into Heimville, 
fittingly to visit the Heimville Museum. Unassuming from the outside, we did not expect to see such a well-curated and well-stocked collection of artifacts as we walked in. The museum was clean, it was tidy and organized, and you were sort of guided along by yourself with signs and descriptions giving you important tidbits as you move along. The most moving exhibition had to be the war memorabilia room. There were poems on the walls, there was a war soundtrack playing in the background, and a good balance between informative and emotive. Another fact that we found really interesting was that the museum is built in an old lager, the last lager or fort of its kind to be built in South Africa. A further 8 minutes and 6.8 kilometers is step 31, Kenmo Lake. This amazing lake is on private property. And no, we weren't trespassing. The owners actually decided to open it up to the public for free. And they even threw in some benches, jetties, bridges and a function venue. Firstly, it's hard to believe that somebody actually owned this in their back garden, but also it's so kind that they decided to share it with us in the world. We really enjoyed being here. Apparently, in autumn all of the trees change a variety of different colours and leaves settle on the lake too. Can you imagine? We'd really like to see that. Also, don't forget to sign the visitors book before you leave. The visit to Kenmo Lake was slightly frustrating for us because, as with Karklo Falls, we didn't anticipate the beauty and comfortable surrounds. So our step 32 could easily be shifted to Kenmo Lake should you so wish. And that is another picnic. We had the entire TV camp to ourselves, so we decided to take the 24 minute drive back and set up a picnic for ourselves. It was really peaceful and even a little bit romantic knowing that we had the place and moment to ourselves. We also spent some time on the water and in the hammocks relaxing after lunch until it was time to build a fire as step 33. Sitting around the fire with marshmallows and wine in hand as darkness drew near was the perfect way to wrap up our road trip through the Drakensberg and Midlands meander. As the stars emerged we could not help but be grateful for this journey and the beauty that South Africa has to offer. And even though we have mentioned quite a lot in this travel guide, we know there is tons more to do in just these regions alone. So if you know of some must-see hotspots or mandatory touristic experiences that we missed, please share them with us and with others in the comments below. We also have a few travel guides, articles and detailed advice on our website linked below as well as some closer look videos and pictures on our Facebook page. But if you're looking to keep up to date with our current travels, Instagram would be the place to go. As for this guide, please feel free to add and remove experiences to suit your traveling spirit and keep us in the loop by tagging us on your travel adventures. Hashtag Dear Traveler. To answer the age-old question of where to from here, well, you could take the Sani Pass to Lesotho, you could head home, or you could be bold and visit Bali. If you do choose Indonesia or Thailand, we have a few more travel guides to help you along the way. Whatever your choice, please remember to always enjoy your journey!